Hello, hello. So I'm here to wrap up the day. I will come back to some learnings, but also I want to ask you some questions for the future. And the key question is around value. Why are we doing all of this at the end of the day? We want to use data and AI more creatively to reach value. But what is value? First big question. Second question, how do we reach it? And we've seen right now two different talks which really gave us some ideas of the value we can get. And my third question is, by when can we get value? To help you to think along the way, I'm going to start a little guessing game, because it's the end of the day, and I want you to be ready to network uh, with a little drink after. So, the image about AI and the feeling about AI and data seems quite positive in Germany. But let's see, let's go deeper. According to you, how many decision makers, what is the percentage of decision makers who think that AI and data can have a positive impact on the German economy? Is it in the range of 10% of business users, 20, 30, 40? What do you feel? Let's have a try. Who wants to risk it? 30%. Okay, <laughs> someone says better? 20. We got 30, 20, 50. Okay, and you said 80. Okay, so we have some very, very positive people and some more, let's see, people. Okay, so we remember that. Second question and guessing. How much, really, do you think AI and Gen AI can add to the German GDP by 2040? Any idea? Any range? 2%, 3 5 10 Anyone wants to risk it? Any idea? 1, 5. Okay. We feel it's a little bit more cautious here. Anyone feeling more optimistic or not really? Okay, so I keep those numbers in mind. And the last one is around productivity. Do you think it's uh, as low as the previous number or a bit higher? Lower? Higher? 25? 35? And you said? Okay, so... <laughs> it must work for the IQ. <laughs> so we have a pretty, I mean, you have been very optimistic over there. Um, we have, a, if I compare with other uh, countries in Europe, I think the German um, are more cautious. And I think they are right to be more cautious. And I think it does really reflect certain realities that we see with our clients. So it's a fairly positive outlook. Now, how many of those do you think are using AI right now and plan for using AI in the future? It's in Germany and it's, um, all my statistics are from McKinsey research. Any idea? How many plan to use, how many are using AI right now, and how many plan to use it? What do you feel? Do you have an idea? No? 28. 28. I love the eight. That's 28 already use it. Okay. And how many plan to use it? 80. Okay. Okay. So, 28, 80. The eight is strong. Which sectors in Germany are the keenest to use AI? Or are we using AI already? Two sectors, manufacturing, yep. FSI, and someone said something else, sorry, I can't hear properly. Retail, okay. So, keeping that in mind, we heard about um, EU AI Act. Do you think this number is right? Yes, 
yes, no? OK. So the answers. You were pretty, pretty <laughs> near. It was 27, but uh, that's pretty good. I mean, we see that there is a fairly grounded will to use AI, OK? And the sectors who are using it more, no surprise, manufacturing and FSI. Um, we know that the way you ask the question can induce some result, as we saw with the Deloitte study, but people feel a bit scared and are not sure about the next step regarding uh, the EU AI Act. And my final guessing game is, OK, we see that there is a pretty optimistic, positive view on using AI. Uh, but if you read the headlines, this headline asks us a question of, OK, we don't have any doubt the value is going to be generated by, by when it's going to be generated. Do you think it's a real headline, or I completely made it up? Real? Fake? Fake? Who said fake? <laughs> OK. Well, it was real. Oh, yeah. It's, I think we don't have doubts about the value can be generated. By when is a very, very good question. It's such a good question that Gardner, in the latest report, says that GI deployments are going to slow down because costs are increasing. Do you think I make it up? Or is it a real research result? Real? Yes, it is real. So, based on those little guessing game to just put you in context, I like to share five myths, five reasons why I think we don't always drive the right value and value as quickly as we want. And then over aperitif, you're going to t tell me if you think I'm right or not. Okay. My first myth, or first reason why, we are not generating value. Well, it's because value is not a crystal clear concept. I think we should all start meetings with what is the value you want to create? Because sometimes we restrict ourselves when we think about value. And uh, um, I think it's fascinating to see that uh, death by ROI type of um, denomination. If you have a very narrow definition of value, like an ROI from a data lake, you're not going to empower your team to think a bit creatively. If you focus only on your small department, you're not going to inspire people to think differently. So, my first tip is to make sure you broaden the definition of value. Brainstorm with your team, collaborate with other departments. What do you really want to uh, create? And for instance, an example from Decathlon, a retailer. A retailer needs to shift product off the shelves. Okay. But is there something else they could uh, think about? And one of the value definition is, not, is now around reduction of CO2, which means they're using different type of KPIs, which means they're using data completely differently because they are testing models for renting gears instead of selling them. What does it mean on Data IQ? Well, on Data IQ, you could measure different type of value, but you just have to brainstorm and think about it to use it a little bit more creatively. And so environmental value, social, so, so we, we rarely talk about that, but in um, manufacturing and particularly in uh, maintenance, anticipated maintenance, the way you can make people feel safer has got a lot of value. Second myth. So in my title, I've got CDO, and it's not because you have a CDO that you have a magic wand to, ma to make all your data works perfectly. And I discover that uh, my best friend in the organization should be really the CFO, because nobody really understands truly the work a CDO is doing. And what they're doing, it's not just about data. It's about value at the start. At the start, you need to think about what is the value you want to create. And at the end, you need to showcase a story. What, i what is your uh, storytelling around the value you created? And in the middle, it's about trust. So 
the data team should never work by yourself. What does it mean in terms of little tips? Well, collaborate with different uh, departments, challenge the KPIs you are given, of course, benchmark and double check what makes the most sense in terms of model, for instance. Um, and then really make sure people will believe in the data you are using. So communicate around the way you make your data more trustful. What does it mean on that IQ? Well, we are trying to help you to go from the LLM mess to the LLM mesh. And that's another way the platform can be used. Third tip. We've seen a lot of hype around AI. And we've seen that if everybody is using AI, as Gernot says this morning, we're not going to be very different. And it's not because we are using AI and we put AI uh, everywhere that we're going to generate super return. I think it's very important to be humble and to think about what data and AI can do and what it can't. And we need to have those conversations internally. So, yes, we through AI, you can lower the cost of prediction and understanding and generating. Fine. Therefore, you could take faster decision because you have different scenarios that you're going to be able to understand faster. But that doesn't mean it comes for free. And there are few costs that nobody is really highlighting, and I like to speak about them. The cost for being ready. You need to have the talents in place, and you need to to inspire people to use those tools. You need to make sure you understand the cost of being wrong, because you are working with probability, and you need to have this conversation internally. You're not going to deliver one result and one solution that people need to follow. No. AI is subtle. You're going to have different scenarios which are feasible, and you in your organization are going to decide what you want to go for. There is a cost for being curious, and that also relates to Gerald's presentation this morning. Because if you want to be different, and if everybody has got those tools, how are you going to make them work better for you? And how can you make sure that people are keep on learning in your organization? If every sales people use the equivalent of a chat GPT to um, write sales emails, we need to make sure we still can do them ourselves. And the cost of closing the loop. And that's essential. And every time I speak with um, uh, clients, I realize that's a real issue. It's not because you have different models and different scenarios that the rest of the organization, from an operational perspective, is ready. So let's make sure our insights are really used. My tip is to make sure that it's about less model, but less POC, but operationalize those models and try to think straight away in terms of operationalization. It's very difficult to say. Uh, think about AI as a boat, okay? When you buy a boat, it costs a lot of money. But what costs more is to run the boat, okay? It's the same for AI. So it's not about rushing and building plenty of models. Make sure you start from the start to think about how to, the deployment and industrialization of every step of the process. And on that IQ, we really focus on helping you to make this part much easier. My myth number four. Any uh, cyclist here? No? Okay. I'm not a cyclist myself, but um, they make me laugh. And uh, my husband is actually a middle-aged man in Lycra, one, one of those. And um, it's a metaphor because I do think it's not about the number of uh, little tools you, get, you got to measure your performance. Um, there are some things that you don't measure, actually, and which are really, really important. And that's a collaboration in a team. So before anything, you need to nurture the AI and data culture in your company. And it's all about making sure they collaborate, which sounds like a lovely word, 
but there are very few platforms where you actually can see the work of other people, where it's actually documented. It's uh, quite difficult. It's, um, it's also quite... It's very important for me to make sure we can fail fast and fail forward. I did used to love that um, culture at Google where 20% of your time could be spent on a project of your choice. What if we give a bit more freedom to people to do those type of things and see how they can experience and use data more creatively? That's why maybe we all need to be, we can't be all data scientists and we don't want that because it's very expert work, but what we should all be is we should all be data artists. And on that IQ, we really have the opportunity to visualize what people are doing, and we have plenty of little features which help us to document it and to actually pass the balls. It's like a real collective sport, and we can play all together. And my last myth. Um, it seems very evident, but actually it's better if we say it. The more users we have for Gen AI doesn't mean that we have a better ROI. And that doesn't always click in some organization. That's why I love this little cartoon, because it's exactly what's happening at the moment. You have a lot of individual interaction with um, uh, your ch chatbot, but you have complicated and different prompts. How many of you have actually tried to build their own chatbot? Okay. Well, I, I thought I had a very good idea. I tried to build one myself, and the time it's taking me to train it, and actually the energy consumption I, I wasted on doing that with wrong prompts did make me feel a bit uneasy. And I also used plenty of documentation, and some maybe I shouldn't have used. I felt a bit bad, but that's... Uh, my uh, journey that everybody is kind of taking at the moment. But we need to think very hard so on the use cases where we're going to use um, those applications. That's why my tip is really to make sure you do less but better prompt and you collaborate around that, that you use a system which enables you to uh, really monitor precisely what you're doing and, of course, store all the answers you get so everybody and the chatbot can benefit from it and you don't start from scratch every time. And you've seen it before yeah. on that IQ, for instance, it means that we have Coast Guard, which enable you to really double check which model will be the most interesting for which task and switch. So, in summary, that's the five reasons, maybe there are more, you'll tell me, but uh, for me it does strike me that we have five key reasons we are not really uh, getting value as fast as we want, and few ideas and few tips on how we can do better. And really, I would love to hear from you, actually, if you have other, um, other tips, because I want to make that better. So, how and when, okay? Whatever the tool you are using, you can Talk about your value story in different ways. You can isolate the impact of the tool you are using, and that will speak more to data people. So speed and agility, stack efficiency, the control. But that doesn't cut it for the rest of the organization. So you really need to articulate um, your story around the economic value you did create, the social or environmental. And I really enjoyed what Fabian said uh, this morning about um, how we're going to use the efficiency created by AI. That's really a question I keep on asking myself. It's all very beautiful to be more productive and more efficient. But what are you doing once you are more efficient? Are you going to um, congratulate your team and help them to feel better and give them some time off or time to create a project on their own? Or are you going to ask them to do exactly the same? So this efficiency for me is not a real value. We need to go and ask ourselves much more questions and see how we can use it. And uh, it's our role, uh, I think, also at that IQ, to push you for creating that 
real value, which will help you to be truly different. How can we help you with that? Well, we have a team dedicated uh, to, <laughs> to helping you with the value. And actually, Max, who's just here, Max, raise your hand, because maybe not everybody knows you, uh, is really thinking business first and help organization to think business first. Then we help you to orchestrate. And that's what we are really, really good at. We will find the little pieces and make them work all together for you. We will help you to not only buy, but run the boat. And that's, that's extremely important. Um, we talk about artificial intelligence. I think we should replace it sometimes by collective intelligence. If someone lives in your company, if they store all the information and um, within that IQ, everybody can, uh, someone else replacing that person will be able to take the work straight away. And building that collective intelligence is absolutely key nowadays. And finally, we will empower you to be not just model experts, but to think about the value you're going to drive. So if you haven't tried already, I invite you to uh, try on, the, on our website. And most importantly, if you have your different type of value stories that you want to share with us, don't hesitate. We have a lot on our website for manufacturing and for different industries. And if you have specific questions, don't hesitate to connect. Uh, I'd be very happy to, uh, to help you and to get your ideas on better myths or new myths, a new reason why we don't get value straight away. Thank you very much.